Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. We're continuing with, with football and the Rand nephew to make a Premier League final will be contested on Sunday the 19th of May at the National Stadium in Kingston. It will be a clash of familiar foes as defending champions Mount Pleasant face Cavalier in a repeat of the 2023 final. The championship match is set to begin at 6.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 7.30 ECT. But our coverage will start at 6 p.m. 7 ECT with a 30-minute build-up to kick off. We'll also have live coverage of the third-place playoff between Arnett Gardens and Waterhouse beginning at 2.45 p.m. Jamaica time, 3.45 ECT. All right, so as we prepare for the championship, you know, Ricardo, we're hoping to, of course, keep on talking to different um, guests and just create that sort of atmosphere and build up because what's for sure is the JPL season, again, has brought different storylines. It has brought a lot of players to the forefront, the leading goal scorers so far, um, you know, different players that have really stepped up throughout the season. We're down now to the business end, and I think that's where the excitement um, you know, is at. Everybody wants to see if Mount Pleasant can, of course, retain that title. Or, of course, will Cavalier put up a challenge and defeat Mount Pleasant? And I think this weekend is going to be a hit. I attended one of the matches, um, not last Sunday, the Sunday before. And Ricardo, massive turnout, a lot of vibes, you know, good energy. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine what this Sunday will be like. Well, actually, the first thing I want to see is what the crowd support is going to be like Massive. at the National Stadium. Of course, there <laughs> is a change of venue. The other playoff matches have been contested at Sabina Park, which in terms of capacity is a smaller venue to the National Stadium. So if the Premier League, um, if the PFGL can find a way to fill the National Stadium, I think that would be monumental because now you're talking about, well, in truth and in fact, four teams because you'll have the third place Correct. playoff as well. But the truth is the fans will be coming out for the final, for the championship match. And it would say a lot about how far the Jamaica Premier League has come in recent years um, if they are able to get a capacity crowd. Let's not forget that only recently there was a, a massive track and field event at the National Stadium. The entire bleachers was free and they still did not get to capacity. So... If the JPL final can get there, that will be magnificent. Now, I don't think they will, but I think you'll still get a terrific crowd on Sunday. And it's the national stadium. It's the national stadium. It's where you want to be playing all your big matches. It's like Wembley in England. That's where you want your big matches to be played. It is supposed to be the best football surface in the country it is supposed to be the best venue for the fans as well and i'm really looking forward to what i like to call the spectacle that will unfold on super sunday because the <laughs> epl will end on sunday the jamaica premier league will end on sunday um when will the tt premier league end well they the have league their last match as this well. weekend yeah, as well this weekend yeah I, I didn't call a leaguer in that because because Real Madrid have already done what they need to. But still, we'll still have to talk about one more match. When it, we come it's in. inconsequential whatever happens in La Liga on Sunday. You know what's consequential? What? We're continuing to prepare for the championship on Sunday. And we did say we want to speak with representatives. So we're going to be talking um, representatives from both finalists starting today. Paul Christie is the sporting director at Mount Pleasant Academy. And he joins us via Zoom. Paul, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Good evening, thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, so happy to be able to chat with you. Of course, Mount Pleasant again has made it so far in the JPL competition. How proud are you? Because I feel extremely happy and it's it's not even my team. Yes, your countrymen are on the team, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, from July 1, 2023 would have planned and been prepared for this moment so it's uh it's not a surprise that we are here we have put a lot of preparation and planning in place for this moment and we have placed a different uh, uh many different scenarios many different eventualities many different outcomes so we have been prepared for this moment and uh the uh, the final piece of the puzzle is to go and execute on Sunday. So we have been prepared for this moment and we're ready. 
and uh, the fans will be in for a treat come Sunday, Super Sunday. Yes, yeah, Super Sunday, as Ricardo is describing it. You speak about preparation, and you know, many a times, Paul, people don't understand the work that goes into all this success. You are uh, talking about a team that, of course, had the title last season and is hoping to retain that title. So I want to know the secret to Mount Pleasant because even yesterday on the show, we had some youngsters that came on here and they sounded as if they rehearsed for the interview. And that's just to speak to the level of intellectual, um, you know, the, the how smart they are. They're so intelligent. We were here um, sitting, listening to them. Talk to me about the Mount Pleasant setup and how these players are groomed for competition. And, well, I have to say these interviews. Well, at Mount Pleasant Football Academy, it's always work in, in progress. Uh, we are in a privileged position. We take nothing for granted. We prepare and prepare and prepare for all eventualities. Uh, in the world of Mount Pleasant Fiber Football, all is fully ingrained. Again, whatever we do, it must have a football dynamics to us and we are developing the process and trusting the process and uh, it's going good so far. So it's not by mistake. What we are doing at Mount Pleasant is deliberate. We are creating future leaders of the Caribbean and by the, the, the worldwide standard. And we think that the team up here led by Mr. Peter Gould and his wife Amanda Gould and the rest of our supporting staff with Mr. Theodore with Moral Thomas to name a few David and Ferguson. We have one dream, one aim, one objective. And uh, we are totally inclusive from both the academy as well as the first team. And we just uh, try to change the way of operating from a personal standpoint, but we have principal approach that long after we are gone. The, the work that we would have done would have been by embedded in the fiber of uh, Mount Pleasant Football Academy. Yeah, Paul, I first want to know how many buses you'll be taking to Kingston on Sunday? Uh, maybe 45, maybe 50. One thing I can tell you, we have taken care of Saint Anne, Saint Anne will be taking care of us. Saint Anne will be coming to Kingston. That I can guarantee you. 45, so that's 45 30 seaters, right? I was, that's just minimum. I was never good at math. 45 times 30. Mariah, you can try and do the math. That's the, <laughs> the, that's the minimum number of fans that we can expect to see Mount Pleasant take inside the National Stadium on Sunday. So you know it's going to be blockbuster stuff. And we're really looking forward to that. And it's great. And you are right, Paul, because you have taken care of St. Anne, the first team from the parish to win the Jamaica Premier League. And then the very next season, you return to the final as you pointed out this is something that you would have put into planning as soon as last season ended and I'm pretty sure even before you won the first one this is something that you would have been planning because the truth is everything that Mount Pleasant um, have done in 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 the last what eight to ten years suggests that it's a team that believe that they can be dominant um, at the Jamaica Premier League level and even beyond looking at the Caribbean and I think ultimately at the CONCACAF level as well. Is that right? Well, I can tell you, right when I came here, the first objective is to be an also I also name in Jamaica and we have a seven-year plan to be CONCACAF champions and uh, uh, the work is in progress. Uh, I know it has never been done before, but why not us? Yeah, we believe, we believe, we dare, and we believe we can always push the the, the barriers, set new bar boundaries, set new horizons, and we have a fearless approach in the way we we do things here, and uh, we don't just speak about it; we be about it. We why there's a famous line here while they work from nine to five we sleep from five to nine we are always up and available to improve learn and and and, and hope that what we are doing here at mount pleasant can impact the not just the major but make caribbean football better and and, and show that we are as good as it 
anyone else to compete at a, a, a CONCACAF level. And we think that within seven years' time, we will be ch CONCACAF champion. That is our ultimate aim. And immediately in front of you is Cavalier Football Club. They have done very well themselves. Of course, won the title in 2021. They were in the final last season. The season before that, they finished in third position. And I think everyone knows by now that their technical director, Rodolf Speed, knows what he's doing from a tactical standpoint. And so having seen the Mount Pleasant team all season, having... Um, the knowledge of what happened in last year's final, you have to expect that Cavalier will be coming um, a lot harder than they have ever come before, and things will be a lot tougher, don't you think? Well, I was speaking on, an, on another platform last night, and I shared that this with the host. And June 11 last year, I had a, a discussion with one would have speed in the parking lot, and I told him that. I'm predicting that it will happen again next year. So we have been preparing for all eventualities, including this. We realize that Cavalier has been a better team than last year. Yes, this is why we play the game. We respect, we are respectful of all opponents. We fear none. And we have been, we trust what we are doing. We trust the technical expertise led by Mr. Theodore Whitmore and Mr. Davian Ferguson and the rest of the supporting staff. We trust what we are doing. So we respect what others are doing. However, we trust what we are doing. And we will be, we, we can't listen. The truth of the matter is, at this point of the season, there's absolutely no excuse. So it's rectangle, rectangle, and rectangle again. It's time to play football. We are ready. We are up and with no excuse. We have to prepare the team from a principled approach that we, we are not dependent on uh, personnel but from a principled approach and we respect the technical expertise of Mr. Rudolf Speed and his Cavalier outfit and the table doesn't lie. <laughs> he, he has a compact uh, season however he was the closest to us and you'll never know if he had only just this, 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 this season this condition alone to, to, to focus on it might be a different result. So we respect and know his, 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 his technical expertise. However, we respect and trust the technical expertise of Mr. Theodore Whitmore and, his, and Mr. David Ferguson. So we are ready. We have been prepared. The time is now. The moment is here. Execute, execute, execute again. Yeah, very much the case. And one quick one before we go. I just want to get an understanding of what the mood is like in the parish of St. Anne in the build-up to this final. Well, one thing I can tell you. St. Anne is preparing to come to Kingston. <laughs> St. Anne is preparing for Sunday. They have waited for this moment. And they have been preparing. Yeah, they... The man in the street, the people in the office, they are talking about it. Uh, they are ready. They know that it's going to be a blockbuster. The Cavalier is no slouch for us to, to beat them on Sunday and retain our championship. We have to be better than we were last season. We know that what we have done, we identified areas that we needed to have improved on. We have improved. We trust what we are doing. And we will, I can tell you this. Final whistle, come Sunday evening, Mount Pleasant will be okay. Mm, final whistle, come Sunday evening, Mount Pleasant will be okay. Paul Christie, it's been a pleasure chatting with you on the Sportsman Zone and we wish you, Mount Pleasant and all of St. Anne, all the very best. Thanks, Mount. The work continues. Yeah. Um, St. Anne is Mariah's favorite parish, by the way. I think it's because they call it the Garden Parish, why she is so in love with it. Or maybe it's something else. I'm not sure. Um, Ramharak. Where do you get these things from? The truth. Who gives you this information? I'm a journalist. Well, you need to up that game because that's wrong. I never said that was my favorite parish. It's not? Actually, I don't have a favorite What's your parish. favorite parish? I've been to a, a lot of them. Okay. But I don't have a favorite because I also like Portland. It's yeah, but you, but you have said that it's your favorite place to go. When did I say that, Ricardo? 
You said that about Ocho Rios. I love Ochi. I said yes. that. Yes. Listen, it's we'll your talk. favorite place to go. Break time, and then I'll <laughs> speak to him. Okay? Break time.